let's start with what happened yesterday. The back page of the, of the uh, Daily Graphic, uh, Benin hold 10-man Black Stars. Uh, uh, I'm sure you saw the match. And uh, you have your own views about what happened yesterday. We'll talk about it. The front page says, KG people, seven drowns in water tank. Um, uh, and Freddie Blay challenges Shiraz over contempt case. Nigerian traders at Swami magazine back to work. Daily Graphic has all those stories. The Ghanaian Times this morning says, fight against corruption, experts advocate constitutional change. We'll talk about that. They are suggesting that uh, a change be made so that the president is not compelled to appoint more members of his uh, cabinet from parliament. And um, danger looms on Amasaman in Swim Road. It's also on the Ghanaian Times this morning. The finder says EC sells voters uh, data to a private company raising privacy breach concerns. It's here. The Auditor General has been looking at the report and the National Security Minister concerned about conduct of University of Education with about lecturer. The Daily Guide, Freddie Blay, Bass's saga, Shiraj in bizarre court moves, and uh, runaway Timba Galamse Queen in court, and Otun for Sachs second chief, Ghana lobbies Egypt for free trade office. That's on the front page of the Daily Guide. Some of the stories I have here and some of the news papers this morning. My guest to do the talking is a member of the CPP, uh, Madam Broda Ayana. Good morning. Good morning, Hope you are great. I'm fine, thanks. Mm. Rainy morning. Grateful for your time. Uh, it's been uh, raining this morning. Uh, reps of the NDC and PP are yet to reach our premises. Wait for them. <laughs> but let's start a conversation from Daily Graphic, page 20. If you take a look at that story, uh, you might have seen uh, that uh, the Malaysian exercise on the uh, Accra Tema motorway were told that it was West Municipal Assembly carried out a demolition exercise to clear containers and other illegal structures erected along the Tema Accra motorway. The exercise, which commenced at 7 a.m. on Tuesday, saw the Assembly's tax force using a bulldozer to clear the structures while police personnel provided uh, security. We're told that over 200 illegal structures uh, stretching from the Accra end of the tow booth of the motorway towards Shiashi near the Tetekwashi interchange. Some serving as residential accommodation, garages, vulcanizing shops, and chop bars were brought down by the tax force. Uh, the chief technical officer of the uh, Ayawaso West Assembly, Mr. Gestinokan, who's also who doubles as the chief building inspector, told Daily Graphic that adequate notice was given to the affected people, contrary to the assertion by the displaced persons that they were not uh, notified. Mr. Okan said most of the occupants had been there without authorization, and the assembly engaged them to relocate, but that advice went unheeded. The chief technical building inspector said the exercise became necessary after the squatters ignored the over of the assembly. He said in order to prevent people from returning to the site, the assembly had put in place measures to regularly monitor activities along the stretch to prevent uh, people putting up legal structures. Uh, that's the story uh, so far. The residents, those affected, uh, condemned the officials of, for the manner in which they conducted the exercise. Once again, Madam Broda, <laughs> demolition. Um, we wait, they come, we we'll go and demolish, and yet we wait again for them to come back. Uh, are we doing the right thing? Hmm. Good morning, Ghana. Mm. Um, I, I don't know whether to say it's a positive move from the assembly mm. or not, but I'm just wondering how come the, the um, squatters are complaining that they were not notified? Right. Um, the truth of the matter is that you do find them writing on the various uh, containers and stuff, remove, mm. remove, and a date is given, and it doesn't happen. So I, I presume they thought that it was going to be the same old story. I've always advocated that we don't need squatters around um, residential areas. Not only are they a nuisance, but um, they also um, converge there and there's so much sanitation problems because they don't have washrooms, they don't have anything and you know like you, you, you virtually 
are surrounded by rubbish most of the time because they don't have washrooms, they do it in black polythene bags, mm. they throw it all around. We see them. But then I also think that when we are doing such things, we should do it with a human face. Um, to take them by surprise that we maybe are dawn is it's not really nice because um, we had children staying there, babies, and like they're talking. I mean, these are hard times in this country. And to mm. think that people would just go in and demolish you know, without that human face is what bothers me. And it looks like in this country, there seem to be two laws for two different sets of people. The rich have their law and the poor have their law. Because you see, when you're going from the, um, I always saw West Wogan, right. um, the East Ligon police station, you see that um, forest reserve, they started demolishing right after the MPP government came into office. At a certain point, they stopped. Are you getting me? Mm. And they stopped because people who own those structures there are people that matter in society, so to speak. Now, those um, people have now put up permanent structures that block work, which is not allowed. But then you can't actually blame them, because if, if you look at um, where the police station itself is sited, mm. that is what has giving them the courage to also put up those black factories. So you see, you see that now we have um, shopping centers coming up. Coming up around there. Coming up around there. Um, we have other eateries and other things, and provision shops and stuff coming up, all because of this situation, that police station over there. So I am asking, how come they did not demolish those structures and have given them the opportunity to put up permanent structures and they get up in the morning go demolishing poor people's uh, uh, what kiosk and containers you should always start from the from the big people hmm. they should know better they should know that these things are not right but right if we're going to start demolishing on the motorway it should be on both sides because the motorway had 300 meters of space left the MPP under President Kufuor reduced it to 150. And still yet, we are seeing illegal structures coming up. What, I mean, why do we do that to ourselves? Why are we so selective mm. when it comes to justice? Why, why, why should it always be the poor who are made poorer when such things happen? And I, I was a West Wogan. They are demolishing. But they are the same people who intend to put up a market right at the curve at Shashi, where they now have a carport. Mm. Does it make sense to put up a market when we know the history of markets in this country, the kinds of sanitation problems we have in this country when you have markets by the streets? And Ayawas West Wogan wants to put up a market just out of curve. Where the interchange is. Where the, the inter the, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. And they've sat there and watched squatters to come up at the mall, even Spanner Junction, which is supposed to be one of the places that we should actually keep neat and, you know... Um, the, the, uh, okay, the mall area. The mall area. I think it falls under Ladma. Okay, the La that they could open somebody. Or whatever. Mm. But these are things that are happening. Mm. I'm just saying that, yes, let us demolish. But let us also do it with a human face. Let us at least know that there might be vulnerable people in there. I walk there all the time, and sometimes you find babies. They have babies. And this morning when I looked at the clip, I felt so bad. I am for demolition. I am for um, order. But then that, let's not be selective. If we're going to demolish, let's demolish. And I want to see them demolish those structures that are on the reserved motorway, forest reserve. I want to see those ones go down. Then I will know that they're really doing their work and they're not being selective. Grateful. Let me introduce my uh, other guest who uh, just joined us. Uh, member of Parliament for Tamale North, a member of the NDC, Honorable uh, Alhaji Suhini. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you are doing great. I'm terrific. Uh, thanks for your time. And MP for Futu, uh, a member of the NPP, uh, Honorable Alexander Fiyamak. Good morning, too. Good morning, sir. Hope you are doing great. My grace. Okay. I'm fine. In yourself. Uh, I'm good, too. Thanks for joining us. We, 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 he didn't know, he didn't know I am an allergy. Oh, okay. He's an allergy. All right. As quietly. <laughs> okay, it wasn't for the camera. Okay. I'll, I'll allergy. <laughs> <see. laughs> All right. Welcome, Jato Betu. You were late. Uh, you left Madame and Yes, I had to do it. Sincere apologies. All right. Grateful for your time with us. We, we, we started a conversation, but let me give you a bite before we move on. It, it, 
issues of demolition where we allow people to stay there seven years, ten years, and then we go into to to just get them off. Are the assemblies doing the right thing? Honorable Sweeney, let me start with you. Well, let me say good morning to you and to uh, render sincere apologies once again for mm. the late arrival. And good morning, I mean, for both of us for the late arrival. And then good morning <laughs> again to, uh, you know, our cherished viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North constituency. Um, I think that generally we have a problem with land management in this country. And it's been so for a very long time. And I think some of these problems that we see are all the symptoms of how disorganized our policies around land management are. And that is why um, Parliament is currently considering the land bill. Um, it was uh, at a point with the committee. Uh, we uh, seem, I'm a member of the committee, so I know. And um, there have been some, you know, few uh, problems in relation to especially uh, uh, spousal rights, you know, when it comes to, you know, land ownership. And that seemed to uh, always be the, the tony uh, area. But uh, I am not saying that policy, when it is passed, will solve all the problems because even though I think it's a very good document, it still has uh, some lapses. It will take uh, our attitude also as a people mm -hmm. to even make uh, the existing policies uh, serve us better. I don't see uh, 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 attitudes that are encouraging, that are supportive of even the current uh, uh, scattered policies that we have when it comes to land governance. And I talk of attitude not only of just um, uh, people who want uh, a place to lay their head, but also people who are taxed with the responsibility of managing these lands, from the traditional authorities, uh, even to those who are in the formal uh, uh, sector, say the Lands Commission uh, and all the allied agencies uh, when it comes to land management. Because it is the attitude of one that sometimes leads to the attitude of another not performing the role that uh, he or she is supposed to play and 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 for us to get around this point we need to first of all tackle you know policies laws governing the land administration system and also have a different attitude to even the implementation of these policies and laws beyond that what currently pertains is simply unacceptable, and I wish I didn't have to add anything uh, to uh, her point. I mean, uh, sometimes the, the uneven-handedness that you see in the way that we deal with people who clearly uh, are not respecting uh, laws when it comes to citing of properties on, 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 on lands that are reserved for whatever purpose uh, leaves so much to be desired and we must all be worried uh, about that. And again, uh, the, 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 the way sometimes it appears as though uh, people check their responsibilities over a very long time only to wake up you know, in the wee hours of the day uh, to act like, you know, they are being callous, mm. you know, and sometimes to the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the, the intransigence of some of the affected people cannot also be ignored. Even though we say that people over the period may have ignored their responsibilities, sometimes to, uh, in some cases, they haven't or they don't. But it is just the intransigence of these developers. They are engaged over and over again. They feel that nothing is going to happen. And so when the people who are engaging them later get frustrated, they are left with no option than to sneak in at night or at dawn to carry out some of these things. So it is, it is, it is a multifaceted problem. And I think that um, uh, for me, we need to have our laws you know, uh, 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 put together mm and pointed you know in a very uh, good direction and then also work on attitudinal change and perhaps we'll be uh, making a headway I'm grateful oh, about Afinyamakin, let me quote one of the squatters she, she says you know we are in the rainy season and accommodations hard to come by in accra 
Where do they want me and my children to sleep tonight? This is so inhumane. That's uh, one of the squatters, uh, Memuna Isa, a chopper operator. In dealing with this ish problem of squatters, turning attention to providing accommodation should be a way out of it? Well, um, thank you, Bright. Um, let me say good morning to mm. my constituents in the Futu. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we allow such uh, sympathy, uh, patronage to, as it were, divert our attention mm. from the real issues. Uh, Suhini has spoken well. Madam has also made some very good points. But let me add the following. Under normal circumstances, when you want to engage in a land transaction, my view is, first, you conduct a search. After that, you make sure that you register. You want to build, you get a permit. And then you go on with your construction. Mm. But you and I know that 99.9% .9 of Ghanaians will not even want to do a search. Towards the tow boat, to your left, up on the hill, all that stretch. The wager tow boat. It is so, yes. The wager tow boat, thank you. GBC lands. People have beautiful houses there. When you ask them, they say, oh, we know. When we did a search, we were told that that is for GBC. Somebody would want to sell the property to you and tell you that the condition is that you cannot register. People still take that risk. And then I was talked about this, the, 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 the reserved, uh, you know, uh, space on the motorway. People know. Let me go take you back to my constituency. Irrigational lands. People are selling. The beachfront. People know. People are developing it. You ask. They don't have title. They've gone to lands commission. Lands commission has written to them. You cannot. We will not grant your application. They come. So, unfortunately, who, who would have to take the action? The one with executive power. The politician. And the problem is, if you are the politician, you want to take a step, then you know how it, it plays in Ghana. Mm. Oh, you know we are poor. Oh, we voted for you. Because you suspect I'm an NDC, I, because you suspect I'm this, because I'm an MPP, then everything would uh, just become bizarre. So I am making this point that if, as a country, we really want to make progress, then it is important that we, you know, get firm on how to uh, give effect to our laws. Other than that, we'll come back and be complaining. The state will continue to bear set in case at cost. Come to the veterinary area in Winnipeg, but the veterinary land. People have sold these lands. And the last time I told somebody that that land is veterinary land. Where is your side plan? The threat was, we'll not vote for you. Why should I stop you? And if you come, they've just encroached the whole. So I said, okay, we're going to even do a golf course there just to stop people from touching on the land. And if you don't take care, within the next two, three years, mm. people would encroach, 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 and take over the whole space. So it is a risk we take. It is our attitude. You, you want to do it by force without any regard for the law. And when the executive, the authorities come in, we again turn around and say that, oh, they are interfering. Oh, they are intimidating. They are harassing. That would not help in our development. To conclude on this point, may I suggest that perhaps my good friend, the committee, they are looking at the, the, land, the, 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 the land law. In other jurisdictions, Madam and I, if we are interested in a piece of land, cannot go directly to the vendor. You would have to go through an agent, a lawyer. Can we introduce that in our laws? At least that would help 
in doing away with some of these risks that we would want to take. Because if the law is that before you engage in a transaction, in a particular property, in a land, there must be a registered agent that you would have to go through. Mm. A solicitor who would have to endorse the transaction, known, registered with the Lands Commission. That would even help the state in terms of taxation. So, because a lot of people don't pay property tax. You engage in a transaction like this, you wouldn't even pay the appropriate tax. If we are strict on it, I'm sure we'll get somewhere. Look, not too long ago, reform started at Registrar General Department. My brother, today, we all know that if your company don't go and renew, your company will cease to be in existence. When they started, it was a, a tall order. Mm. But today, companies, um, owners, directors are complying. If your company ceases to exist, you cannot transact any business. When we started with the GRA, realized that people were forging uh, tax clearance certificates and all that, they introduced some reforms today. It is difficult for anybody to go and forge, to go and do any bidding, uh, to participate in any tender. So I'm saying that it may be a difficult matter. Look at the way people get defrauded. People want to invest in uh, people's businesses and all that. Because we don't have a system where if I want to invest, mm. I would have to go through a consultant, a professional, to assist me, to do the placement for me. So on my own, I just get up without even knowing the risk. So before you realize, oh, this company has run away with my money, they folded up, I'm getting my, I can't find my money. But if we know that by pay our laws, you cannot on your own, you sit in your office, you have your 10,000, you need to go through somebody. At the end of the day, that regulation alone would help bring sanity so those my, my the, the 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 minister i'm sure is listening to us i'm sure that whatever provisions that are in the bill if this issue of third party involvement a professional getting involved as an agent to superintend the transaction and would have a role in ensuring that look before we conclude this transaction which I would have taken the necessary steps to ensure that you are not even going onto state land which you cannot engage in a transaction on, or that the title to that property upon which you are engaging in that transaction is perfected, the appropriate tax is paid once the transaction is sealed. But All these will help. But but uh, uh, but these quarters, I mean, I, I really do not know if they care about all these. I mean, they are compelled no. to move to where they are due to certain conditions. Wait, wait, wait. So... Wait, wait, wait. wait. You see, um, it's one thing. Mm. You are telling me that somebody is settling on a property. Do you know that some of these so-called quarters end up selling properties? Uh, exactly. When they know they don't have title exactly to it. the point. Don't let us make it overly simplistic by saying that somebody has come. So, Bright, you go and buy your land. Mm. You have title. Somebody comes and says that I'm a squatter, I'm poor. I've not been settled. I'm on your land. You want to move on your land, it becomes a problem. You are going there. It's a waterway. Then you say, oh, I don't have a place to sleep. I am coming from Winneba. I'm coming from Boga. I'm coming from Insema. I am poor. Let us look at... The issue of housing separately. Mm. Let us look at social intervention by government in addressing some of these challenges. Rather than overly simplifying the matter and saying that, oh, somebody is a squatter. He needs a place to lay his head. Housing is a problem. Yeah. So the person has put up some temporary structure and don't go and demolish it. I would think that the executive should rather look at the point where the person is actually putting up the structure and stopping the person. And not wait for 10 years. Exactly. I mean, you don't wait. You don't wait for the thing, the person to put up the structure. Then thereafter, you want to go at dawn and, you know, pull it down and it becomes okay. another 
issue. Okay, grateful. Let me get Madam to wrap up for us. Yes, so, uh, you see, this, this issue of squatters and the like, I just want to ask, um, how many low-cost housing has government provided for ordinary people? Yeah. What, what, what is kind a of facility has been put in place? You see, let's, 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 let me different get matter. Mr. Afanyamake, no. Who is the squatter? We are in this country. But where who is the squatter? Where, 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 where state, 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 state lands, we state lands are given to big people. Ministers and the like. You are the ones who are the beneficiaries. No, of no, I've not benefited. I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you. I'm saying state lands. No, but mention one or two people you know. The beneficiaries of state lands. I'm not mentioning names. We know state lands. We know state lands. We know state state areas. When you go to cantonment, you go to the rich, you go to all those places. They are not being inhabited by ordinary people. They are being inhabited by very rich people and public officials. At the end of the day, how, how do you expect an ordinary citizen who is a civil servant or a public servant earning less than 2,000 Ghana cities a, 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 a month to go and be able to afford those places? So it is something that government has to look at. It is not a question of looking at them as squatters. Rent control laws, that's an institution. What has government done about rent control? That is one place that can at least, at least give them a cushioning because at the end of the day when you go to rent a house mm. or an apartment you are asked for two years advance people in this country cannot afford it that is something we have to say and say it well state housing company of ghana what kind of housing do they put up do they put up houses that ordinary Ghanaians can afford no they put up houses two hundred and fifty thousand dollars how many Ghanaians can afford two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a house so let's let's not so so for you there's a link for between me, the squatters and yes housing. there's a link between the squatters accommodation employment and all that and mm. it's a complete a big ball game you, you understand the governance of this country has right. gone down the, the drain I'll, huh? I'll come to you at the she, end of the day, so what I'm saying uh, is that, that okay. Yes. Okay. But you know, so all I'm that. saying is that let's not, you know, look at squatters as other people coming from space. They are Ghanaians, and therefore, when we are making our laws, we should take them into consideration. We should not just look at them that we can just go and push them off. No. You know, I, I, I just wanted to say that I agree absolutely with, you know, the points that she has raised, especially in relation to um, how uh, state lands are allocated and the problem of uh, low-cost housing mm. and also uh, the fact that we, 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 we tend to sometimes ignore uh, even the role that rent control the rent control office can play in resolving some of these matters because i mean who is proud to be a squatter but sometimes people by circumstances are compelled we have to first of all understand that and what are the circumstances the one of the the the, the problems could also be the fact that the person cannot even rent you know space that is available mm. either space that has been provided by government because like she says it's too costly either as a rent or to buy it is too costly or even when you go to the ordinary person who has space for you you are asked to pay two years and the rent control office is unable to help you and if you don't have the two years you know rent advance which uh, if you divide by half can you know uh, give you some place to lay your head you will find people engage in that so that's why i'm saying that we need to first of all put our laws right when it comes to land you know uh, uh, administration in this country and also work on attitudinal change both at the formal level and also at the you know victims because i call these people victims the uh, victims level and then uh, also uh, not lose sight of the fact that it is the responsibility of government to house or make Citizens. housing, yes, or Citizens. make housing, you Social know, housing. Uh, 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 what do you call it, a priority. Because at our level, really, you cannot expect everybody to be able to own a house. And that is why social housing is, is very crucial, especially for developing countries uh, such as ours. So I, 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 I absolutely I, I, I agree with, with right. your points. Even though I also agree with my uh, brother's point about us not sometimes simplifying this thing and making it look like all those who are affected, mm. you know, in the way that these demolitions happen uh, 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 are, are, are innocent or victims because not all of them are. Like, 
like you said, some of them are actually sharks in this business. I mean, they, they, they encumber the place, they take the land, and then before you, are, you realize, they are selling they it. Become owners. You know, they themselves will even make money from other, you know, uh, uh, poor people who will have no choice and go and build their home somewhere. They no longer live there, but people pay rent to them when he doesn't own the place. So we have to, you know, look at, that's why I said it's a multifaceted problem. Mm. And so let us not just look at it simplistically. Uh, right. Um, uh, my, let, let, me, let me quote another uh, uh, from you. There's also this uh, 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 victim who, whose name is David Kumsi. He says that, uh, he told the Daily Graphic that he had lived in the slum for seven years, emphasizing that he was forced to live there due to challenges in finding accommodation in the city. So perhaps the question is, maybe we we'll have to look at housing. Yes. None of you might We have to. Right. We have a housing deficit in this country. It must be looked at. Mm. Government policy must be aimed at addressing it. Over the years, efforts have been made. But question is, has it sufficiently addressed this? No. Should we continue in pursuing that housing issue? Yes. So coming back to the point on the table, mm -hmm. we are talking about people who illegally put up structures and that is where i have a problem with my respected uh, friend to my rights submission you see when we mix the issues mm. we may be making points that are very valid but how we situate it become problematic and i would explain why if we are dealing with people illegally putting up structures let's not bring in the issue of they are doing this because they are poor. Wooden structures. The wooden structures. Well, you were not, you were not too happy when I tried to interject. Wooden structures. We're not, we're not talking about. Yeah, whichever yes. structure. I okay. mean, why if wooden steel mm. block, it is illegal. That land is not yours. Don't let us encourage that. Mm. Don't let us create a certain impression for somebody to come to TV3 and say that I am poor. The space that you have. For car park, I'm putting up my wooden structure there. Don't let us give that impression. Don't let us create the impression on this platform that in Ghana, there are some people high in society who are benefiting from state lands. At not, the detriment, hold on, hold on, is not. hold on, hold on. You see, Bright, we can make such sweeping statements. We can make such sweeping statements. It may be enough for our purpose, but the effect of it will be to be creating a certain negative impression out there. The question is, if there are state land, somebody has applied for it, a company, an individual has applied and has paid, look at it in that context. Applied as what? Hmm. As which person, which individual? Why? If you go and apply for a land, if you apply to be considered for a, a, a property, whether a state property, I mean, whether for the state private, housing private or property. if you go to term at TDC and you go and apply. Are you saying that at TDC, they are selling only or considering application of politicians? So I'm saying that the real issues are there. It doesn't happen. They should advertise. Please, with all due respect. Good. If you, the, your contention is that there should be an advert in the papers, I think it is valid. I think it is valid, but that is not what you've just said. <laughs> you are saying that instead of the land benefiting people, the, the it is only majority. exactly. It doesn't and happen in, hold on. In, our, in our constitution, right? If you if you if you allow <laughs> uh, me to make my point, rather than attempting, be, be, at, be, rather than be, rather be, than attempting be, that approach, of time, we will not make. I, I want well, you to make a allow a flow, statement as if, whether if you, if it is happening or not. If you allow a flow, mm. you would understand me. I am saying that the point she's making, she's mixing it up. She's creating the impression that land meant for everybody, all right, is being limited or restricted to a select few. And so, I'm saying so, that so answer, that is answer, not the answer case. Answer this question. What is, is it happening question? or it is not happening? What is happening? Is that, that the case? The, no, the no. Are you saying officials 
uh, are acquiring land men for the larger majority. Is it happening or not? At you? where? No, I, I don't. No, you no, see, no, I don't where? want to mention it, but I'm asking you a In that question. context. Just answer and let In that me context, me. I do not know. Okay, so it is not happening. I do not know. It is not happening. Of any land men for. Listen. But, no, it is not happening. Right. You know, that, answer, you know that. Let's move on. You know that. You know that. Please. Please. You know that. It isn't the case in this country. Okay. The so land meant for the larger populace. Okay. Where airport residential area was. Uh, no, <laughs> but, but that is okay. Uh, what was the purpose? He says it is not happening. No, so what was the wrap purpose? up and, and move so on. So I am saying that if we are discussing mm. issue of people putting up structures illegally on state lands, we should address it. Okay. Don't let us create the impression that, oh, because the state has failed, it is right for somebody to put up a structure on a land that does not belong to him. Because these people who put up structures do not only put up structures on state land, they put up structures on lands that you have bought. Okay. I Others have bought as individuals. Okay. So let us address it that it is not right to put up a structure on a land which does not belong to you. Because if you simplify a squatter to mean a poor person, you also be making a mistake. And uh, Suhini made a good point. Okay. If you simplify it and say that a squatter necessarily means a poor person who cannot afford, who cannot even pay his rent, I'm saying that no, that is not the reality out there. Grateful for your time. Let's turn to Daily Graphic. Uh, Nigerian traders at Suami Magazine are back to work. Uh, that story is well known. Honorable Suhini, is this problem properly? Resolved. We are told they are back to work. Have we resolved the problem of foreigners in retail trade, or perhaps uh, we are back to work? And so, when there is another issue about foreigners, we will rise up and start attacking people again. Well, the answer to it is we have not resolved the problem yet. We have just managed to restore calm, but the absence of war does not mean peace. And that is what people in authority uh, must learn. The period of uh, calm, as reported, should only serve as an opportunity for um, calm heads mm. to lead the implementation of the laws as stipulated, uh, you know, when it comes to retail business in our market centers. I was ashamed as a Ghanaian when I saw videos from the Swami magazine area. That which the you know, uh, traders there engage in uh, is condemnable. It's, it's un Ghanaian and it must not be the method that any Ghanaian uncomfortable with you know, the practice of having foreigners uh, engage in what they claim they engaged in uh, uh, should be doing. I mean, that is not the way to deal with it at all. I mean, when we saw our brothers and sisters being uh, chased and bitten in South Africa, we were very appalled at the South Africans. We were very, very, you know, uh, ashamed of what the South Africans did. And so we should not be seen to be doing uh, the things that made us uh, very unhappy when the South Africans were doing it. So, first of all, I, I, I want to urge that, you know, cool heads at all times must prevail. We have the right institutions and the right laws to deal with the frustrations that, you know, are expressed. All we need to do is to use the appropriate channels. Demonstrations are one of the appropriate, I mean, it's one of the appropriate channels you know, petitioning the people who have to do the right thing is one of it. Boycotting their events is one of it. Even voting them out of power is one of it. And you can continue to vote them out until you get what you want. Nobody says that, you know, your umbilical cord is tied to one political party or one political regime. You vote for people to solve your problems. So as members, of, uh, I mean, as retailers in general, in the coming election, you can make it your, your point and say, look, come meet us as retailers, assure us 
that you are going to implement A, B, C, D, and this is how you are going to implement it. Because sometimes it's not just the assurance. You need to examine the solution and the process. So the person says, I will make sure that foreigners do not retail or do not do business in your markets. Don't just shout after you hear that, no. Listen to how the person intends to do it and convince yourself that indeed it is the best solution that will serve your interests better. And based on that alone, decide which party you will vote for. Mm. And hold that party accountable. Don't say because you voted for it, when it comes to power, you are going to be patient with it. No. Hold that party accountable when it comes to power. So there are various channels through which we can find resolution to our frustrations, either than resorting to what we saw them engage in. I think that we should not uh, uh, encourage that at all. But there is also a general problem of how, especially those of us in the media, uh, have over the period, you know, uh, uh, created the impression that everyone else who is not Ghanaian uh, is bad and is the one who, en who is engaged in uh, the unacceptable practices. I mean, I don't like the categorization of criminals, especially by the countries that they come, they from. come from. I mean, very needless. Why will you, in your report about, you know, headsmen, reduce it to Fulanis? Why? What do you gain from that? It is stereotyping, and it is, it is unethical, in my view. If it is headsmen, it's headsmen. Where did you go to, 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 to learn that only Fulani people are headsmen? They may be the majority, but it does not mean that any other, you know, tribesman or ethnic group cannot head cattle. You know, so it's, it's, it's something I don't find palatable. You find, for example, recently, eight kidnappers arrested. And then you see headlines saying, three Nigerian kidnappers. Out of a gang of eight, three of them are Nigerian. Why do you choose to highlight the Nigerian bit of the, uh, of the, of the whole crime? When they are just kidnappers. So over the period, you create this impression of, you know, foreigners being responsible for our woes. Mm. And, you know, make it easy for people to target them unfairly when we uh, feel uh, uh, uncomfortable about the situation that we find ourselves. So maybe it should also be a wake-up call for those of us in the media in the to be media. very careful about how we categorize these crimes, especially in relation to uh, where the people who have committed them uh, come from. I think it is, it is unacceptable. But generally, I think that, um, I mean specifically, I think that the government of the day must take opportunity of the calm that we are told has returned to Swami mm. to apply the laws to the best interest mm. of the Ghanaian businessman. Uh, uh, Honourable Yamakin, uh, are we able to do it? Uh, there are concerns as to whether we can strictly apply the laws. Well, right. So let's subject this whole thing to some uh, practical reality uh, tests. My colleague made a very good point, and let me add on to this. When I was growing up, I heard in Winneba, anytime somebody engaged in petty trading and is doing little savings, they say, ah, yeah, let it, yeah, nah. mm. okay. my, my grandmother would save every little of her earnings, and we called her my letter. Mm. Um, Nigerians come here to trade, to do business. We accommodate them, we receive them, we work with them, we give them places to rent, we rent our shops to them to trade. Whereas under the ECOWAS Treaty, we have categorically said that they can, Ghanaians can go there, Nigerians can come here, Ivorians can move in. I mean, within the sub region, mm. ECOWAS members can trade. Free trade. But again, in our domestic laws, we are saying that, yes, there's a caveat. When it comes to retail, you can go there. That is a law. See, can Nigeria, Ghanaians go to Nigeria and engage in the retail business? No. 
at the law court complex. Mm. The gentlemen who sell the books, the law reports, they are all Nigerians. They are selling their books. Are Ghanaians selling books? No. This one may think that they just reopened. They said they are back to their, to their business. They mm. are working. So question is, who rented that space to them and all that? So don't let us make it political, partisan, and all that. The law is there. It is like the, the, our mining laws. During the NDC time, with all the concerns, they came to parliament to amend the law, to give room for small scale, medium scale, and all that. At least to allow Ghanaians to participate in the mining sector. What did Ghanaians do? What did we do? We go and register the business. We say we are the owners. Bring Chinese people in. And then they take over. Then we, when the law, the policeman is coming, the, then they say, oh. <laughs> bring Asians. Well, well, let me. Uh, let Asians me, also. They, 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 are, they are notorious. <laughs> they, are, they, are, they have gained notoriety. Yeah, sure, <laughs> but they have gained notoriety. Okay. They, they have gained notoriety <laughs> on record. And recently, the, 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 the Chinese ambassador at Cape Coast University made a strong point to us that mm. as for them, they don't know where our gold is. They don't know. That's true. That is what the ambassador said. Would you say it's undiplomatic? It is not. But, but, but do you believe him that they do not know? Ah, the point I'm making on this platform is that it's our own people who aid them. Okay. So we, we turn around and complain. We create the problems. You see, we have Ghanaians also in Nigeria occupying high positions. If we are not careful, we create problems for our Ghanaian brothers and sisters in Nigeria. By applying our laws? Is that what I've you're not saying? said by applying our laws. I said if we are not careful. If we are not careful. If we stereotype, if we create a certain impression, because you are dealing with them, you are doing business with the person. If uh, then you turn around and say that uh, Nigerian should go because maybe he has money to reduce his price. But <coughs> you gave him a store to rent. You have been buying from him. So our traders, our traders should work with the law enforcement agency in ensuring a proper implementation of this rather than this whole attack media you know going to close down somebody's shop you don't it you don't you can't do that it is not right can one also say that perhaps the Ghanaian did not give him or her the 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 shop to do retail business because they, they are allowed to trade but not into retail trading they can do wholesale so I rent my shop to you but I did not say that do retail trading that's not wrong on the part of the Ghanaian well, if that is another view, mm. it is legitimate. So perhaps the Ghanaian renting no, the, no, the but shop has not done anything. No, 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 no. Right, unless we don't want to do justice to the issue. At magazine, Swami, they do retail business there. Eh? Oh? Sure, but you can do retail no. business. No, but my brother. You know the shops are open for retail. There are some in Makola. Makola is not only for retail. Right. You can do wholesale. Right. I agree. Mm. But largely. Okay. Largely. They do retail business. I was okay. If you go there, what do they do there? I, do you think that you don't have Nigerians at Abosoka? They are there. Yeah. Plenty. They are there. They work with them. Some of them, if you are going to Lagos, buy me some stuff. Instead of going to Korea, some of them, they have the capital. So they go to Lagos. Uh, they go to Korea. They buy them. They come. They work together. It is when it is turning into uh, somebody making more money. Then they turn around and say that, oh, then I just, but you've been living with them. You have been working with them. So if you, you didn't want them to engage in the retail right from the outset, you don't encourage that. And like I said, if you go to Nigeria, how dare you, you Ghanaian, you want to go to Lagos? Or but any, but, uh, you uh, want to go there uh, and uh, do uh, no, no, no uh, Ghanaian again, can again, engage like, freely in a retail business in Nigeria. Again, let me you ask can't. you before Madam comes in. Wow. If if the Ghanaian, the citizens encouraging foreigners in retail trade, is it not the duty of the state to stop it? Oh right. The duty how how 
how does the state stop yeah, it our when laws, our your laws, own our laws your, do not allow own. that and so if the citizen is breaking the law it's the duty of the state okay to stop so it. okay so let me give you a practical example at swami the shop is there the nigerian is selling hmm. the policeman with uh, any state official in charge of enforcement they get there a Ghanaian is sitting there Masa, you you are a nigerian why are you operating this uh, retail bit? no 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 they, i'm i'm only a salesman the shop is for my boss ah uh, Shop in the Odia, and I'm here with the What would you do? The document to show it. What document? document? No, the documents actually bright sometimes yeah. show that the, the Ghanaian owns the shop. <laughs> Most of the time, is it right? You are talking to an entrepreneur who, who is down there. But, but no, the right. state. I mean, right. right. I am state. not a the politician state. sitting in state. parliament. <laughs> I'm not a civil servant sitting talking to you. <laughs> I live with them. I know. I know. I know what is happening. <laughs> Let me get down to make a submission and then we can come back to you. But please so come we, in. Yeah, go we resolve, we resolve this issue. When well, things go bad, say. then we can I around. agree with the um, majority of what they said. Mm. You know, mm. it's us Ghanaians who are to blame sometimes because we actually urge them on. We give them the shops, we sit with them. But the other problem is that I think that the only way we can solve this problem is probably to get all of them talking. They should all come um, to a round table because you see, these Nigerians, some of them are actually not, they speak Nigerian, but they are Ghanaian. Mm. That, that's, that's another thing that we have, we, we have to look at. There's some of them who are Ghanaian, but of course, maybe uh, born in Ghana, lived in Nigeria, grandparents Ghanaian, lived in Nigeria after the 1969 Aliens Compliance Order majority of these people when their grandchildren have come back mm. some of them their children they've come back and they're also trading in there so you hear um, some of our brothers from the other side speaking real chi and ga and all that you can hardly tell the difference but the whole issue is that um, we have to agree that they have certain they market marketing <laughs> <Pardon>? <laughs> that's bad no, if the person yeah, has one of his parents, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That we will call them. Is, mm. Then we are wrong in calling yes, them. Yes, we will call them Nigerians, but some of them are Ghanaians. Ghanaian. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They're only coming back home. Yes, they're, they're they have Nigerian coming, ancestry. Uh, That's coming back Nigerian. home. So you can't say all of them are Nigerians. But you see, they have. We we have to agree that they have some marketing skills. Growing up, like. Um, Honorable said, mm. we all knew that these people were very thrifty business people. They could really trade. And I keep asking myself, how come they can sell this for five CDs and my Ghanaian counterpart is selling it for seven CDs? I'll definitely go and buy the five CDs. So it's, it's a, a question of turf war. There's a turf war going in there. And they have to sit together and try and find ways and means of solving this problem mm. by telling them that, look, my, our brothers, this is what you can do and this is what you cannot do. And therefore, we don't expect you to be selling these things. You can come together as a group, get into the wholesaling business, and we'll buy from you and sell. I don't think that's going to be very difficult. But then as Ghanaians, we must also stop. Because you see, there's no point for you trying to fight people and at the same time, you are the cause of the problem. Because if you take your shop, if you go to Aposoka and other places, they do take shops from Ghanaians. Because the rentals are so high, the Ghanaians say, I can't afford it, they give it to the Nigerians. And sometimes the Nigerians, they come, you know, we don't like doing things in cooperative forms. We just like individual, just me. But with them, you can find five, ten, six, you know, of them taking one shop. So we have to learn a few tricks That's from correct. them. That's correct. And then also be able to con uh, correct. compete correct. with them. Correct. I've heard the top of yeah, but one, one minute each. Honorable Sihini, did you sleep well after Black Stars match last night? Oh, my God. You didn't sleep well? Um, I was hoping you wouldn't bring it up. <laughs> I have uh, for some time now insulated myself from all the disappointment that the Black Stars, you know, uh, bring to me. And so thankfully yesterday, I did not, you know, pay attention to the game. And even though I was hoping they would win, mm. I was later relieved that I didn't watch. <laughs> you know, I didn't pay that much attention because it's been it's been a roller coaster for me. I've had to struggle to divorce myself from you know uh, the team, mm. uh, even though I hope every time that like Limomo they will do something to reignite you know that love that I used to have for them. But uh, I thank God that I didn't invest you know, my emotions that much into the game yesterday. Okay. I would have been terrible. I would have had a terrible <laughs> okay. night. Uh, I don't know if you like it. it wasn't a bad start, uh, 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 was it? 
I don't follow football. Unfortunately, <laughs> when I saw you in white, I thought it was a, a victory sign. For uh, I like wearing white. I, yeah, I do. I'm not, you know, I've had many disappointments in football. So I, uh, my first uh, <laughs> encounter with the Black Stars, uh, 92, eh? mm -hmm. I was yes, a young boy. Uh, yeah. And that disappointment. And ever since, it's been one disappointment uh, after the other. But we wish them well. Mm. I think yesterday they did their best. I couldn't uh, watch the full the 490. Uh, yes, I, I was feeling sleepy at a point. You know, I wasn't watching, but I was <laughs> sneaking to <laughs> listen to commentary here and there yeah. just to know so what to say. I think our, 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 our <laughs> men must be more organized mm. and uh, <laughs> press on. I'm sure. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get there. From the little I saw, it's not just our men. I think the coach too should do something. <laughs> but I'll wrap right. up for me on this. I, I didn't watch it. Oh, you I, didn't watch I don't too? Watch, uh. I don't watch Ghana, so Ghana matches. So you see matches. what is happening to the That's <laughs> right. I don't watch Ghana matches. Is that, is that out of fear? I think it was 19. Yeah, because I... I, I think it was 96. <laughs> I, or is it... I can't remember. We... That, that, the, 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 the Bukum disaster. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the, the Black Stars the Black match Stars with Germany. We lost 6-1 yeah. to, 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 yeah. to yeah. Germany. I, I slept out <laughs> of the house that day. I didn't know where I was going. I went I, to I lie at a, park, a school <laughs> park near <laughs> you know, to, home. And I just... <laughs> you know, I always have this feeling. <laughs> now that I don't the, care that The much matches anymore. that you expect Ghana to win, they would always disappoint. So okay. I, I don't watch Ghana matches. I went to bed at 7 yesterday just to mm. make sure that I, I sleep through. <laughs> no, we're not here. But um, kudos to them. They've done well. Mm. Um, it's not an easy uh, match, mm. Africa. And um, you can't underestimate any country right now, Benin. Everybody would look at it and say, maybe Benin, we could have done, mm. we could have taken them on. But it's not that easy. So I wish them well. Um, I'm really praying that they do bring the cup home. And Ghanaians, we normally start this way, very slow. Right. And then we, we kind of build confidence and then we're able to deliver. So I'm hoping that they okay. will deliver. That is so perhaps raw, 2-2 uh, uh, for right. starters. One, uh, one refreshing thing I noticed going through social media yesterday was that no one is saying their performance was as a result of somebody's bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> No. Alan used to hear this so MP for Tamale North. <laughs> Alexander <laughs> Feyoma, you, you want to say something? <laughs> he doesn't want to say anything. He has nothing to say. <laughs> 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 Alexander Mark is MP for a foot. They, 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 uh -huh. they didn't lose a match. They didn't lose a match. So it couldn't have been anybody's uh, bad luck. Madam Rodayana is a member of the CCP. Gentlemen, I'm grateful for your Wednesday morning. Stay here.